Greetings. Today we have another inexpensive Chinese pen. This one is a huge inexpensive Chinese pen. So this is a Wingsong Model 590. It's readily available in the $5 to $10 range, um, but it is a very, very large pen. So just to give you some perspective, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. This pen is very, very big. It's almost all plastic though. So it only weighs uh, 25 grams. So it's a fairly light for its size uh, pen. It doesn't really feel like it has much weight to it at all. Now, when you buy these pens, when you what you're buying is basically new old stock. These pens were made in the 90s. So what you will get will be dusty and uh, some of the uh, plating here might be flaked off as you might see uh, on this pen, etc. So just be, uh, just be prepared for that. Also, uh, we'll get to this a little later in the video. Um, I have two of these, and in both cases, I had to do quite a bit of work. Well, not quite, but I had to do a little bit of work on them to get them to write, um, which we'll talk about in a, in a moment. Um, so, like I said, large pen has a cap band with some decorative uh, design work on it. And again, in both the cases of mine, this was uh, peeling and flaking a little bit. Nice big clip, substantial clip, uh, in fact. Um, with a nice big sort of ball on the end. The uh, top of the clip, the clip itself has the Wingsung logo on it, and at the very top of the clip it has 590 stamped on it, and it has this sort of target shape design on both the top of the cap and at the end of the barrel. When you open it up, of course this pen does post, but this is like a fishing rod when you post it, it is huge. But because the pen is so light, there's really not much in the way of weight that you have to worry about here. So um, you can post it from a weight perspective. It's not gonna, not gonna affect anything. It's got a decent size section, not huge, but it's got a very nice um, sort of lip at the end of the section. Th threads are unobtrusive. The nib is unspectacular, kind of a plain unadorned nib, just says simply Wingsong and some Chinese characters. This is sort of a medium, nib it is unlabeled in terms of size and it has a nice looking feed and i suspect that this feed actually might be made of ebonite i can't be 100 percent sure but i have handled it and it, it does seem to be made of ebonite that's a distinct possibility but um all in all pretty nice now um here's a some good news and some bad news if you don't like this nib the nib can be upgraded fairly easily you pull the nib and feed and you can replace it with for example a number six sized um jinhao nib like you say you got you pull off of a 159 or uh, any other Jinhao pen that uses uh, a number six Jinhao nib actually works quite well on this pen. So the nib is easily upgradable um, for a uh, for you know less uh, you know only a dollar or two. So that is the good news. The bad news is um, and um, th this pen which I'm going to demo later is inked, so I'm not going to show you on this pen. But um, on both I have two of these and both the ones I had did not write at all when I first got them. Um, and um, the, the nib and feed do pull out quite easily on this. And the way this pen comes when you initially get it is this little breather tube is stuck into the feed like that. Uh, the, the pen has a built-in aerometric filling device. So the breather tube um, goes into the aerometric filler. And when the breather tube's there, it fills very nicely and you get really a very full fill. But the pen won't write. The breather tube seems to completely inhibit the flow of ink into the feed. Um, in both these cases, I removed the breather tube. Um, now the pen still fills well. You have to give it a couple more squirts than you normally uh, pumps than you normally would, and it maybe only fills three quarters of the way it does you don't you don't get quite as much ink in it with the absence of the breather tube but you get the extra added advantage that the pen actually writes because the pen literally with the breather tube in place in both my, these examples of these pens i could not get it to write at all but your mileage may vary so if you do get one of these make sure you clean it well it will be full of dust and all that that stuff so i did do all that but um uh, you might want to try writing with it with the breather tube first, but bear, bear in mind that um, just simply removing the breather tube in both cases worked fine, uh, worked fine for, for me. And the nib upgrade is something to consider. You see this nib is okay, but not spectacular. And the number six Jinhao nib is a very, very nice nib. Um, 
I uh, look at the uh, video of the um, Jinhao Model 1200, which is the dragon uh, motif pen uh, from a few months ago. That has the number six uh, Jinhao nib in it, and that uh, that again writes writes really well, really well. It's one of my favorite low cost uh, nibs. But enough about that. Let's see how this nib and this pen write, and we're going to find that out right now, folks. What we're writing with here today is a um, is a Wing Sung. Um, Wing Sung can be one word or two. Actually, I think it is most more commonly two words. Um, Wing Sung uh, model five nine zero, and this is an unlabeled steel nib, but I'm going to say it's it's somewhere in the medium range, approximately. Um, again, once you pull the breather tube, this pen works nice. Uh, it writes, I'd say, adequately. This is a moderately smooth nib, not the smoothest uh, nib in the world, but you know it, it's uh, it's it's serviceable. Um, again, try it out. If you don't like it, just simply upgrade it with the number six uh, Jinhao nib, and, and you know you'll be you'll be you'll be very pleased. But again, this this is a serviceable nib. Nothing terribly wrong with it. You might want to take some micro mesh to this, maybe smooth it. I have not done so, but maybe I will do so in the future. But again, writes writes pretty well. Uh, not really much in the way of flex. I mean, you could squeeze a tiny bit out here, but again, not a flex nib by any means, not even a soft nib, really. Um, it's just sort of a flimsy nib, I guess I would say. Um, nothing special about it at all, but it writes. Um, this pen is actually pretty comfortable to hold, to be honest with you. The section's nice, but the pen is comfortable. The size uh, is not really a problem, because again, it's a light pen, a 25 gram pen, light. You can unburden yourself even a little more by unposting it, um, and you can see it's plenty long unposted, obviously. And like I said, posted, it just becomes like a fishing pole. It's really just just crazy big pen. Um, but I like it. It's definitely worth the it's worth the five bucks. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't pay too much more for this, um, and it's certainly a conversation piece because it's a big, big, big pen. Um, plain black, plastic, light you know not much more to it than that so that's probably enough about the pen let's talk about this ink just a little bit so what we are writing with here is diamine poppy red Um, the best way I could describe this is this is the color ink your teacher would use to correct your tests and your papers. This to me is a classic teacher's correction pen type ink. As a matter of fact, if you are a teacher and you're looking to grade papers and you're looking for an ink, this is literally the one I would recommend because um, it's just that shade of ink that is to me evocative of that of that color. That being said, it flows. It flows well. It's it's well behaved. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It comes in these nice big 80 milliliter diamine bottles, which you'll get a, mile, a lot of mileage out of. So all in all, it's a good good sort of basic standard nice bright red um, bright red ink. Good for. Um, um, uh, uh, like I said, teachers, correction, pen stuff. You could use it for general note taking, etc. If you're, say, reading a paper and you're making comments, or you're reading, you know, some some document at work that you you know want to make editorial comments on, or something like that. Um, um, this is a good, nice standout, you know, ink for sort of circling things and, and things like that. Um, and I like it. Uh, and I like it uh, quite a bit. Good, sort of nice, bright, standard red. It's evocative of red, nothing other than red. Doesn't do really much with any kind of special effects, no shading, no sheen, no sparkles, no anything like that. So a good, basic, serviceable, uh, teacher's correction pen style red, and it works well. So, I think that might do it for this video. What do you think? Yep, I agree. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please subscribe. If you did not, please leave a comment and tell me why. In any case, I wish you have a fine day. Goodbye.